Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dapp University. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how a cryptocurrency exchange works. And I'm gonna tell you about this like from a technical perspective in case you're interested in you know building something like this. Um, this will kind of tell you what they do and you know just generally how they work. So before we do that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. So before I explain how you know exchanges work, let's kind of first say that there are really two types of cryptocurrency exchanges out there right now. There's you know like a traditional cryptocurrency exchange like Coinbase you might be familiar with, um, and that's called a centralized exchange, which basically means that you know your funds are kept on the exchange. Uh, it's governed you know everything is governed by a central server. Um, you know they manage your private keys and things like that. So I'll explain more about what that means here in a second. But really that's just to illustrate that that's one type of exchange. And another type of exchange is a decentralized exchange that leverages some more benefits of blockchain technology to add, you know, like some additional security to your trading and things like that. So I'm talking about the first type of exchange, you know, a centralized exchange like Coinbase. Um, you know, got Coinbase Pro pulled up over here. So first I'm going to kind of explain some high level concepts and then I'll actually like, you know, walk you through using something like Coinbase Pro and tell you like what's happening, uh, so you can understand it from a technical perspective. So with a centralized exchange like Coinbase, you really have like two major advantages. Um, and these come with a trade-off, but they're two pretty big advantages. The first one is, you know, it allows you to buy cryptocurrency with cash, um, you know, fiat currency. Or, um, and it also allows you to trade crypto assets between different blockchains. So, and because of that, it has to be built in a very specific way to allow you to do those kinds of things. Um... Now, the first thing I mentioned, you know, buying crypto assets with, you know, fiat currency or like, you know, U.S. dollar or cash, something like that, um, you know, that doesn't require a whole lot of explanation of why you would need a lot of extra technology to do that. You basically would need to accept, um, you know, credit cards and wire transfers and things like that and actually manage user funds. There's going to be a whole hurdle of regulations to kind of go over uh, or to overcome in order to be able to do that legally, especially within the United States, and then allow people to purchase things on it and, you know, like have security for their money in case their funds get lost, things like that. So I'm not going to go too far down the rabbit hole on something like that. What I am going to talk more about is, um, you know, how it allows you to trade uh, crypto assets for one another. And I'll just take two different crypto assets as my main examples here. Uh, like Ether and Bitcoin. So Ethereum, right, or Bitcoin. And like if you go look on Coinbase, you'll see, you know, several different assets listed. Um, and you'll notice that a lot of these assets come from different blockchains. So what does that mean? Well, uh, you know, with cryptocurrencies, sometimes you can like, you know, create your own blockchain, you know, a distributed ledger of, of assets um, that represent the value uh, that's created on that blockchain, which is a coin, like Bitcoin. It's a native crypto on the Bitcoin blockchain. And then there's other assets that are like tokens, you know, that are built on top of blockchains. These are kind of two major food groups, right? There's others, but this is, um, this is the, the, the basic two groups. Um, it's like if you ever in Ethereum, you see ERC-20 tokens. And that's not really what I'm going to talk about right now. I'm going to talk about mostly... Uh, uh, blockchains themselves and their native cryptocurrencies. So Coinbase allows you to trade Ether for Bitcoin. But how these cryptocurrencies work is that they're backed by uh, their own blockchain. So basically, if I own Bitcoin, I only own it on the Bitcoin blockchain. And if I own Ethereum or Ether, I only own it on the Ethereum blockchain. And because of that, like if I have Bitcoin funds, they're held in a Bitcoin wallet or a Bitcoin, you know, account and address. 
Um, and if I own Ether or Ethereum, it's held in a, an Ethereum wallet or an Ethereum address. And, you know, these two blockchains don't really know how to transfer funds from one to the other because fundamentally the underlying technologies are different. They're just two different networks. They're two different um, blockchains. And this is, you know, a, a computer science problem of interoperability. These are two things that need to, you know, talk to one another and can't. And so basically that's where a centralized cryptocurrency exchange like Coinbase comes in, like once you're in the crypto ecosystem, like how do you trade assets from one to another? So how does it allow you to, you know, make uh, an order, you know, to swap, to trade Ether for Bitcoin or vice versa? Like how does it give you all these trading pairs? Well, there's a lot that goes on underneath the surface, but fundamentally um, what it first and foremost does is it, issues you a uh, an account for each of those networks. So if you want to trade Bitcoin, it'll basically create an account for you on the Bitcoin network. And if you want to trade Ether, it'll create uh, you know an Ethereum account for you. So that's the first thing I kind of wanted to mention is basically how it manages your accounts for you. So um, I'll kind of just show you really quick what I mean by this. So if I went to, uh, you know, Coinbase Pro over here and I went to, you know, deposit funds and I selected, you know, Ether, I see, um, you know, a deposit box come up here and this has an address on it. It's a wallet address. This is a public key. This is okay that I show this. Like I could share this with you and you can send me Ether. Now you'll see these warnings that say, you know, only send Ethereum to this address. Like don't send Bitcoin to this address because that won't work. Um, and that's because this address represents an account on the Ethereum blockchain. Like this account is actually backed by the blockchain. And like if you watch this address and like I close this and come back and, you know, try to deposit again, I'm pretty sure it creates a new one. Let's just check. Yeah, I think that's new. I guess you can tell me whenever you watch the video. <laughs> but basically, it does rotate these accounts so uh, to avoid like you know security vulnerabilities and things like that. So uh, what the centralized exchange is doing here is it's like creating an account for you. Now accounts like on blockchains, um, part of the cryptographic process is that they're comprised of a public key and a private key. And this is, you know, the public key here. You can show people, which is generated, you know, well, it's the address and public key. They're kind of used interchangeably. There's a slight difference. But um, the, the, the public key is generated by the private key. Um, and the private key is like your password. That's the thing you never want to show anyone. Uh, but like on a centralized exchange, you know, the private keys are actually managed by the exchanges. Um, so, but that's what it allows you to do. You, you give, you trade off that so that you don't have to manage it. Like some people don't even want to manage their own crypto assets. Like that scares them. It freaks them out. They don't want to lose a seed phrase. They don't want to lose, you know, a private key. And so they just trust the exchange to manage it for them. And so far, a company like Coinbase has done a really great job at doing this. Um, but I'm just kind of here to explain how it works, especially if you wanted to build something like this yourself. Um, so anyways, that's an example of how, you know, Coinbase manages, uh, you know, wallets. And it does that for Ether and it does it for Bitcoin and all the other cryptos that uh, are tradable on Coinbase right now. And I think 0x was just listed. And so that's, you know, an ERC-20 token that's available on uh, Coinbase now. So it does the same thing for Bitcoin. And that's essentially how it allows you to uh, trade those assets between each other, even though the blockchains can't talk to each other. It gives you a account for each blockchain, it allows you to deposit and withdraw funds from those accounts. Those accounts rotate, but Coinbase keeps you know, a, a backing of basically how many funds you have on each network in order to perform the swaps in a centralized manner. And then it actually just you know, does the trades programmatically on a server and just assigns new balances from their liquidity pool um, to the new accounts. So that's how the trade works. So it's, it happens in a centralized way all on the server and it can only do this by having access to 
you know, funds and to be able to swap these things like this. So it's pretty advanced. Um, it's, you know, cutting edge piece of technology. It's a, it's a high volume cryptocurrency exchange. Um, and that's how it works. So also, you know, like if I, so if I go here on uh, Coinbase Pro and I put in like, a, you know, a buy order, and let's say, you know, I want to buy, I'm going to buy Ether, I'm going to buy a million. So if I was going to buy like, you know, we'll see, actually, that's a hundred million. <laughs> I don't know. I'm buying a lot. <laughs> so I bought this crazy amount of Ether and placed the sell, uh, place order button, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to buy that much. Um, I'm basically telling Coinbase that I have cash and it's going to draw from my, you know, cash reserves and it's going to generate uh, an Ethereum address for me and it's actually going to assign Ether to that account from the uh, taker's order, right? So the taker is saying, I'll sell my Ether for your, you know, fiat. And Coinbase is actually doing the conversion in the background and, you know, transferring US dollar from one person's account to another person's account um, and, you know, transferring the Ether from their, uh, the, you know, the taker's Ethereum address to the maker's, ad from the maker's address, which is me in this case. Um, and that's how it works. That's how it works in the background. So I hope you all uh, found that interesting. Um, and again, it's one thing I meant to mention is you might hear people call these uh, centralized exchanges custodial exchanges. And that's why they're called that is because they're a custodian or a manager of your funds. And I guess the big kind of like uh, trade-off you make with this is that I guess there is some security risk in... Uh, storing your funds on a centralized exchange. People say don't do it because the exchanges can get hacked. You might have heard of like Mt. Gox or some other, you know, big <laughs> hacks that happened in the past uh, from vulnerable cryptocurrency exchanges. And that's kind of what's made people scared and, you know, move towards a different solution, which is a blockchain-backed decentralized exchange where you actually trade, you know, tokens from one account to another directly without putting your funds on a centralized server, without having, you know, a custodial uh, centralized exchange in the middle. And that's exactly what I'm talking about in the next video. So uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and watch the next video where I talk about how decentralized exchanges work and how, um, you know, there's sort of an added, you know, f benefit with uh, and a real use case for blockchain technology in that way to create more secure cryptocurrency exchanges. So until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.